Hello and welcome to another episode of GM Talks. Today we're gonna look at how to play against a guy who doesn't want to do much and you really want to win. You have maybe 200 rating points more and he's solid and he's passive and, and if you know that if you over threats you're gonna lose because he's not that bad. So what to do in that situation? Let's uh, see the game. I have some, uh, some, some ideas about what to do here. I have pretty good grasp of that situation in general and uh, the, the first thing is don't let them get that draw so easily. So I'm back against uh, Tom Petri Peterson uh, from Denmark. He's been 2300 forever and I've been like 2550 forever. So he's the kind of guy uh, I think I should beat more or less every time, even though of course he is a decent player. Uh, and could maybe, if he had played more, become an IM uh, or, or something like that. He's uh, He plays a solid uh, chess. He has a decent uh, positional understanding. Uh, he's, he doesn't blunder and, and so on. So it's not that easy if he's not playing ambitiously. Uh, I choose a King's Indian setup and I think... That's fair enough when people don't know uh, much theory, then I have, I'm much more confident playing the King's Indian uh, because it's, it's a rather interesting double-edged opening. Uh, it's, I don't believe it's correct completely. I'm, I have some, some doubts about it uh, and it, it's very demanding to play, but it's also good for a guy like me uh, because in general, I also sometimes play a little bit too passively, uh, sort of a problem that's gotten a little bit bigger as I've gotten older, unfortunately. Uh, we have a King's Indian Fianchetto uh, situation and uh, I play this uh, setup. I've actually, I think, won all the games I played with this, but I only played against weaker players. <laughs> so maybe the statistics are, are a bit lying, but I played it a, a lot in Blitz and I think it's it's very interesting and funny positions you get. Um, and, and this is all uh, known theory and rook e8. And the main move here, of course, is uh, e4. And uh, I will play the, the, the main move moves be something like, like this uh, here. And I have a lot attacking here. So he needs to do something and he will play here. And I'll play uh, this move. And this, uh, this is a very uh, interesting uh, position where black has a lot of dynamic possi possibilities, but white, of course, has more space. And I believe the position is a little bit better for white, uh, but it is uh, gives you a lot of winning chances and your position is pretty solid. So, so, but you might sometimes get squeezed completely, but I didn't think that uh, Tom would be able to do that against me. But he know, does know theory. I think he knew that e4 was the main move, but I also think he was afraid that I knew what I was doing, which for uh, I actually do know in this position. So he played e3. And this is kind of a solid passive uh, move that's, that can't be good, but it's not bad. <laughs> that's the problem. It's, it's not really good, but it's, it's also not really bad. So, uh, so why just uh, play a little less ambitiously than you usually would do? Uh, and, and this can be very frustrating for strong uh, players that have a lot of uh, knowledge about theory when people sort of, sort of uh, chickens out like this. Uh, but okay, so I play a5 to, um, to get this square for my knight. I think this would be in general, a very nice square, and especially when, when he does not have e4, it might even be even nicer to have this square. Um, and b3 all makes sense, of course, uh, the idea is, is to put this one here. And, um, and he decided to, to not uh, allow anything to, to go in here, and c6. In general, I like to play without c6, but here when he has not played e4, I think it makes sense to take away uh, this square and this square from white. And rook d1, rook b1, uh, getting out of, um, of this situation and maybe, maybe, just maybe, preparing a3 and b4, kicking the knight. The knight here is, uh, is ex exercising a lot of sort of uh, pressure on, uh, on all the key squares. So white will probably have to get rid of it at some point to, to make progress if he, if he wants to make progress. Um, he could also just try to offer a draw, but I would of course say no. Um, bishop d7. That looks a little bit strange because what is the bishop doing here? Well, of course, uh, it does 
It does uh, connect the rooks, which is always nice, but it's also preparing, um, which is sometimes strong, to play something like this, uh, which would hit here, and then uh, maybe even something like, uh, like this, which is also hit here. So this is uh, the kind of maneuver, uh, by the way, I think these maneuvers are very uh, cool. Uh, I like, I kind of like it. Um, I, you can say that it gains, it does not look that strong when the pawn is, is here because this knight is protected, the one here, right? So that's uh, the downside. Rook d1 makes uh, some sense. And also you could, you could argue that this is black's weak spot, is the d6 pawn that you might uh, want to attack. Uh, queen uh, c8 attacks uh, this uh, this pawn and king h2 and i thought oh i might play this move uh, I, I realized that the rook maneuver to e to h5 was probably not very good uh, to uh, to be honest uh, the rook here is 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 threatening the d6 pawn so it will not be a good idea so but h5 is uh, sometimes uh, pressuring here and so on and the king is might be be put out in the open and of course white will always love to play this but sometimes it doesn't work because i can sacrifice it here uh, or with the knight so uh, this is something to look for and he, white decided that he could not do without this move anymore um, by the way, it's often in these kind of positions, if black goes, uh, white goes something like this, uh, white can, black can often go this, and on, on this move, he will push forward and attacking the bishop as well. Uh, I might not do here. Okay, so e4, getting more uh, control over the dark square on this diagonal, and uh, knight h7. So I'm opening up for the bishop. And the taking away this square, and I might, I might go here. I might go somewhere. I don't know. I, I ba basically I, I got a, an idea against Bishop F4. I play Bishop E5, and if he takes, then I will. He will have some black squared holes. It's Knight C E2. Now that's kind of um, kind of a strange move. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm, I also got mm, the, the f-pawn as uh, something, and might even sometime play something like this, oops, sorry, um, something like this, and uh, on this move, play this, and take over the black squares here. Queen c7, uh, I kind of like that move. First of all, it covers the weak pawn, but it also has a x-ray effect on the king here so i am now getting ready for something like this and here he could of course go back i think that that's probably the best move just king g1 instead he decided to play this move and uh, i don't like uh, that move much because of um because of this square uh, which is is uh, is a very crucial square in these kind of situations. Um, so, but White's idea, of course, is that he could always cover with this, and everything is covered. But that is uh, also weakening a little bit. Um, so rook here, uh, getting the rooks into, and I'm I'm basically trying to be able to do this at some point. Uh, maybe pressurize the the deep uh, and f3 and he's he's very quick to play this uh, this move or uh, just bolstering uh, the pawn here but it's also a little bit passive and and i don't think this kind of structure uh, inspire much confidence in 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 his king's position i don't like it uh, but it can be hard to break down uh, so let's see how to do that uh, but I think he's already in some sort of trouble. Knight f4, uh, preventing d5, which was was uh, getting ready to get moved. But bishop e5 is, is kind of a, a, a nice move. And we see we have now full impact here on this diagonal. And knight here, uh, covering there and there. 
and uh, and getting ready to to uh, to and also preventing d5 but i can still do this um and i basically believe that black is much better here uh, of course you're always afraid when you do this that he might come with this move the thing is here <laughs> due to this check uh, i will be able to uh, get the bishop out of the way so it's not necessarily trapped bishop b2 and that does not well it does a little bit but it's not really serious to take this because that after this move uh, for instance if i do something uh, after this move let's see if you do something like this here here then black is just having a much better structure and white is having a bad bishop and weird pawns so i will have a clear advantage uh, especially the, the the d4 square is weak here so I, I think uh, it's not a gigantic advantage, but it is a clear advantage in, in this uh, situation. So bishop c3 is covering, uh, attacking uh, a5, b6 covering the pawn. Uh, I'm not really happy to play this move because now this is, is, is getting a little bit weak, uh, but I had to cover the pawn and also by the way, with the queen here, I have some x-ray here due to this pin here. So this might turn in handy at some point. Um, so there are all these kind of things. And, and this potential kind of counterplay is something you always look for when you are uh, So knight d3, uh, it was difficult for, for black to see what to do, for white to, to improve the position. So he played this move and uh, I was ready for this, which was what, what I was preparing all along. Um, the thing is, in general, you'd really want to do something like this, but with with this uh, h4 in, then this, this square is the big weakness. And uh, and of course uh, this was the plan for for White to uh, to utilize the, the the pin here to uh, sort of prevent black is also having a pin but white is hoping that uh, he will just be able to to do this and take here and everything will be fine unfortunately i had i'd seen this position and i realized this move was nice um it looks kind of strange uh kind of clumsy but all the 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 pins are in my favor now and f4 uh, he does open up for the bishop but the thing is his uh, king is now lacking a permanent uh, home. Take, take, and um, of course he still cannot take due to uh, to this move. And I'm, I'm threatening this move, so he had to play this move. And check is of course very, very annoying. Um, and bishop a6, and and here he, he panics completely. The, the the problem is of course that. That knight, <laughs> that this square is, is a serious uh, problem. It's, by the way, the same as we saw in uh, the video uh, before this one, um, where Doshenko also won the, the King's Indian, where this square was also weak. So maybe it's a weak square that White should look after if he wants to avoid losing in the King's Indian. Anyway, uh, he's in, 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 in some sort of trouble here. Uh, and, well, I think... Uh, is he's actually in big trouble because uh, I will I will definitely uh, be able uh, to 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 uh, to do something bad about it. There, there might be a, a pin here on on some point, uh, and and it will be in my favor. So he he took here, gave up the, the and this is is actually hopeless. Um, I still have my strong knight, of course. He does uh, have some tactical points here. We should be careful about uh, because of of this pin on, 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 on the F pawn. Always be careful about these uh, these things. Um, but I could not see that there was any kind of problems here. So, uh, by the way, this game was played in, in January this year uh, in the Danish league. Uh, so I am having a, a fun time here, uh, threatening the, the rook and, and taking away his counterplay. Uh, Queen C4 covering the rook and and here, the simple thing is, I don't see what he should do here. Uh, but he is having some kind of tricks. Um, 
maybe bishop takes f7 and e6 and things like that so just get out of uh, the way uh, and if he takes now i can just take his rook um, and he, i don't know he cannot prevent here here i win by force rook c7 attacks the queen and uh, there are you can this is uh, by the way tactically it's it's always interesting this kind of position that you can always you can sense that there's something wrong with white's position that there's something it does not coordinate uh, rightly in in a tactical sense uh, there is there's a threat and this one is is loose this one is loose and this one is loose and and there's a, a nasty pin here and and so on and there's also this this knight here which take away a lot of squares and the king uh, will easily get into trouble on on d4 so here uh, i just realized okay after this i'm actually winning material uh, more or less without problem and and he made this uh, mistake and i can win by force uh, check and here we are uh, and of course uh, he has to resign now and he did um, after rook takes knight takes e3 so what did black do in this game well keeping uh, a lot of uh, options open uh, trying to 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 get ready for the dynamic counterplay with d5 and, uh, and not allowing white to 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 get uh, to exchange everything into a draw making sure that every time he wanted to to make the position simpler, uh, it would have a price. Uh, that's a very good way to think about it. Anyway, this was GM Talks. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, with the King's Indian. Uh, thank you for watching.